Netflix awarded a million dollar prize to a developer team who could make an algorithm that increased the accuracy of their recommendation system by at least 10%. The winning algorithm was just a variation of collaborative filtering. This concept is fairly straightforward. Consider this example. Let's say there's a moviegoer named Claudia who enjoys rom-coms, but also likes action adventure movies. And Steven also enjoys adventure and romance, but he also loves superhero movies. So because Steven likes this new superhero movie and Claudia has shown the same kind of preferences, we recommend this new movie to Claudia. Recommendation models typically use machine learning, so I'm going to give a brief overview of what that means. Machine learning can be viewed as a set of functions that learn from examples to make a prediction. These functions form a model and will update as more examples are provided. Machine learning can be applied to user ratings or watch behavior to identify patterns that may otherwise be indiscernible and also account for changing factors like user movie preferences. There's two categories I'll cover, supervised and unsupervised learning. For supervised learning, we feed the system labeled data and the algorithm learns the pattern between input features and the output label. Help me help you. Unsupervised learning picks up similarities and patterns in a data set without labeling the data in advance. To help understand the intuition behind recommendation models, I'm going to first walk through a supervised learning example in predicting movie popularity. The movies. One of the most basic algorithms is called K nearest neighbors. Let's say you have some data for different movies that were previously released on a movie streaming service. Each sample or dot is a movie and the axes are some features associated with those movies. So this could be genre and movie rating, or we could use the number of YouTube trailer views and the total Instagram followers for the featured cast. Whatever these features are, they provide insights into movie popularity, which we're trying to predict. Let's label the movies as hot release if more than 10% of the active user base views a movie within the first week. Otherwise, the movies are lightweights. If we have a new movie that isn't manually labeled, how can we make a prediction? We look at the distance of k nearest points. If we use the nearest three neighbors, we'll then have those neighbors essentially vote on what the label should be. In this case, the new point would be labeled as lightweight. This basically tells us there's a new movie and because of the combination of features, it's not very popular. We can measure distance between the movie samples by reach, or in some cases, it's better to use the angle between samples. And I'm only noting this for clarity when I reference cosine similarity, which is commonly used for recommendations. Now I'm going to talk about collaborative filtering for movie recommendations using nearest neighbors. We can either make recommendations based on a user, or we can make recommendations based on an item, given the combination of user preferences. We'll focus on this item-based recommendations. In this matrix, we have three different viewers who have assigned a rating to each of these three films. In reality, we obviously won't be able to have user rate every film, and we could supplement with watch time. Let's focus on just these two movies. We first need to determine how similar the movies are in order to make recommendations. Think of each rating as coordinates on a graph. So we just draw these vectors or lines from the origin to the coordinates of the movies, and we're gonna look at the angle between the two. We need to find the cosine of the angle between two points to understand how similar they are. This is no different than going outside and gauging the distance between two really far away objects based on your own point of view. But instead of stars, well, you get the point. I'll very briefly walk through the quick math to get the similarity scores when we have thousands of titles to compare. We can find the coincide similarity with the dot product in the length of each vector. So let's take the dot product of each movie's ratings, then the length of each vector, which is just the length of the line on the graph between the coordinates and origin. And we have our cosine. They're 80% similar, compared to 68% similarity between E.T. and Jaws. So if someone watches Jaws, we recommend Indiana Jones. So now let's build a recommendation engine. 
we can use real data from movie lens. This is a huge data set and it covers all movies from 1995 to 2018. So each rating is scaled from one to five and we'll use the exact same collaborative filtering method using cosine similarity. What will you say if I told you there is an app on the market? We're past that part. Just demo it. All right, I'm demoing this Python script that will give us a few of the closest neighbors based on whatever we put in. Top Gun recommends Temple of Doom and Mission Impossible as the closest picks. And all these movies are action-packed movies with big name stars, so it makes sense. We put in Hercules and we're getting primarily animated Disney movies from the 90s. There's absolutely no connection between Hercules and these other movies in the data we use, except for user ratings. There's nothing in the code labeling Hercules as a Disney movie, an animated movie, or the release date. That's what makes it so interesting. This is a good baseline, but obviously there are much more advanced methods of deep learning used by Netflix and other services. Still, Netflix is using some version of collaborative filtering today, item-based for because you watched rows, and user-based for the top picks row. And that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching.